Good morning, FlossTube. This is Kathy, the hands-on designer. It's time to rise and shine. Um, just having my quick little cup of coffee. It's quiet here in the studio today. Had a little bit of an opportunity to um, just shoot a quick video for you. And uh, so let's get going. Um, in my last video, I showed a vintage stitch and I had a number of people comment, you know, hey, show more vintage stitches in your future videos. So I did a little digging. Actually, we were re arranging a little bit of my inventory room and I had to move some things around in a storage room. Yes, new house and we're already moving around in the storage room. Um, I, can you ever really have enough storage? Sorry, Marie Kondo <laughs> lovers. I don't know. Um, but anyway, I, uh, I kind of, I, I found a box that had a lot of, you know, what I call my vintage stitches. So I grabbed another one to share with you today. Now this one, again, it was another, let's see if I can, sorry, it's got glass on it. Um, it's another, uh, Jan Lin kit. So I don't know the name of it. I don't know the designer or I don't have the chart or anything. Um, but it was just a kit. It was kind of what I could get at that point in my life. Um, I did actually initial this one. So this was um, probably one of the last ones I stitched before I got married. In fact, I do remember working on this. Um, the reason why I know that is it's a CJW 1986. That was the year actually I graduated from college and, um, my husband and I graduated, I know, we dated and we were pinned, we were, you know, <sighs> do they do that anymore? <laughs> um, we graduated from college at the same time and then he went on to graduate school. I'll put this down a second since it's glaring. He went on to graduate school um, and he was in um, Florida, University of West Florida, working on his master's and I was up in the DC area making my way in the world and adulting and learning how to do all kinds of things and had my first job after graduation. Um, but a lot of times, well, I mean, you know, your first married is expensive or your first graduated. I didn't, couldn't go out and I couldn't afford to go out and party and do all kinds of stuff. So I did a lot of stitching, <laughs> um, but anyway, so this was, and it's funny, I think I framed it myself, so there's definitely some ripples in the in the fabric that is not your imagination, <laughs> um, and apparently I was going through a phase of like a monochromatic phase, like I just, I thought that would be artsy or something like that, because when I was digging through, I'll show them in future videos, but when I was digging through, whoops, I made a little fall down here, when I was digging through my uh, a box of older stitches, I did this with quite a few things. I don't know what I was thinking, because now today I probably wouldn't frame it like that, but you know, whatever. Um, but uh, just kind of fun to see. It's actually kind of looking back on things that I chose to stitch. I chose to spend my time on this. You know, it's interesting. I mean, there's, there's a house and a lot of little detail and the back stitch, although I know everybody goes, ah, I hate back stitch, but it really does make some of the things pop. Um, so I think it's kind of cool anyway. Um, but there's my, there's my vintage stitch. So circa 1986, yeah, do the math. You can figure out how old I am. Um, but anyway, so uh, it's quiet in the studio today, although this, it's been a really busy week. Um, I leave Tuesday to go teach at the Needlework Guild of Minnesota. This is uh, a teaching week, a week, not a weekend. Usually I'm there for like a couple days and I'm out of there. This is four days of teaching, three classes. Um, this particular event has been a couple years in the making. I remember when they first contacted me and said, you know, they were planning finishing school in 2020. And I was like, 2020, that's so far, or no, 2019, that's so far off. Cause I think they contacted me actually in late 2016. <laughs> so, uh, so yay, it's finally happening. Um, but I'm teaching three classes and a, a two day class, the first one I'll show you really quickly. I don't want to give it too much airtime because some of the gals, some had pre-stitching, some did not. Some of the classes did not, um, but there's always lots of fun little extras. So the first one, um, I have taught this one before. Uh, this one's called Snow on the Ground, and it comes with this lovely little basket, a little pin cushion, fob, and some other fun, oh, and yeah, you know, we do the little monogram on the front of the basket and some other little 
adding some fun little things that I'm adding into class um, like I always do. It was originally supposed to be just a day and a half class, but um, they expanded it to fill two day, two full days. So I always like to have, um, well, number one, it really means that a lot of stitchers will get things done. They really will finish and leave with a finished product, um, which is awesome. And the whole point of finishing school, I think. Um, but, uh, uh, but I like to have other little um, opportunities. We'll call them learning opportunities in there. So, um, so that'll be Wednesday and Thursday. And then on Friday, I'm teaching um, this class. Okay, I have to think about this. Um, okay, I always want to call it Blue Crocus, um, but it's actually called Crocus Blue because when I was naming it, I thought Blue Crocus sounds like a, you know, an 80s hair band. <laughs> Anyway, and yeah, I know a thing or two about 80s hair bands. I, I went to my share of concerts, you know, but um, anyway, so this is um, This is uh, uh, Crocus blue. It's a fun little pillow. They'll be learning how to finish that and do that and then there's again some fun little extra add-ons and things like that in class. I like to do that in my classes um, because if you took the time to, you know, come to, come to, um, come to the, the retreat or the weekend or whatever it is, I feel like you, you know, you should, you should get some of those fun little extras. Um, so the last class I'm teaching on Saturday, whew, I am going to be, I am going to be exhausted <laughs> when this is done. I already predicted, I think I sort of said to everybody that could listen to me next Monday, I'm taking the day off. <laughs> um, but anyway, it's a flat finishing class, but it's a shaped flat finishing class. So making custom flat shapes. This is the first time I'm teaching this particular project. So I'm gonna show it real quick because actually my students haven't even seen it yet. So there's one, see, there's the shape. And then this one's kind of a mason jar shape. And then we got a little double dome on that one. So now I know with these, and especially that last one, I just kind of snuck to you. I'm going to get a lot of requests. How do we get that? When are you going to release it? What are, you know, that kind of thing. Yes, all my classes do in most cases eventually get released. Um, you know, in the, in, in my catalog. Um, sometimes I like to be able to teach them a couple times and then I have to kind of adjust some of these because these really are designed to be teaching pieces. Um, like me actually walking you through the steps and, in you know, it just kind of, it works better that way with a lot of these. So, um, so anyway, I'm looking forward to next week. I'm looking forward to meeting a lot of the girls. There's a couple on my list that are doing, you know, sometimes I say they're doing the double, like some are doing the triple. Oh my goodness. <laughs> they're gonna be real tired of me by the end of the week. <laughs> anyway, so I look forward to that. Um, we've got, a, you know, pre-stitching heading out the door for other classes coming up in the fall. Um, I'll be teaching at Galleria. A lot of you are getting your, I've already started your pre-stitching for that. Um, the pre-stitching went to Salty Yarns. That last class I showed you with the shaped Halloween chalk ornaments, that's the class I'm teaching there. So, um, so anyway, they got pre-stitching. The other class did not. So, sorry. That, long story. You don't need to hear that one. <laughs> but anyway, so it was brought to my attention that um, I have shown you in previous tutorials about how to do... Um, what I call, I've been calling my, my favorite finish of 2019, which quite frankly started in 2018 and will continue into 2020, <laughs> but um, namely this finish where I take a standard size frame. Um, I showed you in a previous video how I used um, two pieces of mat board and I covered them with um, fabric using the double-sided acid-free tape and, and then how I um, put that into the into the frame, and then the, uh, the the stitching portion is actually laced onto padded mat board, all right? And so I actually have gotten a couple emails from some stitchers saying, we're ready to attach it, how do we do that? So I thought, oh boy, I better I better get on the ball and do, my, um, do a quick little follow-up video to finish that out. So, um, namely, the questions have most, been mostly about this one, but it's the same finish for as um, Give With My Heart. That's the piece that I did with Tammy Tuttero of Tammy Tuttero Designs. Um, she did, the, she did the, um, the art, and then I translated it into cross-stitch. Um, I also 
use that same finish on, many of you are stitching the Harvest, um, chock full design now. And um, you can see I did the same thing. And I intend to finish all of the ones, the ones that'll be on the cover will be finished like this. Um, but I have a little more to say about this one at the end of the video. So, uh, but again, here's another one. It's just a standard size open back frame. Um, I did purchase this frame at Hobby Lobby. I live in a small town and I don't have access to a lot of craft shops and things like that. So the, 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 that's why, you know, I do mention that one a bit because that's what I have access to. So it's, I also do happen to really like it. It's just a nice basic white wood frame and it's hard to find a good white frame. And if you say, well, isn't white white? Well, no, white is not white. Um, this is a good chalky white. It's a nice simple, you know, it's a simple profile. And then what it does is it blends well, I feel, with um, the, the, the stitching and then the fabric. I pick it all to kind of go together. And I really like my frames to kind of blend into the background a little bit, not to be, unless it truly, truly is a statement frame, okay? I really just like my frames to kind of disappear. Which, if you think about it, given what I showed you in the beginning, Notice something there? I kind of did the same thing with that one. So apparently that's 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 something that I happen to like to do. So, um, okay, and one more I'll show you. I dragged this one out too. Um, this was my uh, More Chocolate Bunnies. Now, the, the, I think the reason why I picked this one is because if you'll see, um, it's a much smaller piece, but in that same, same size frame. Here, I'll disappear for a minute. Okay, um, same frame, but you know, I just happened to show more of the fabric for this one. Um, it was part of the, the overall look that I was going for with this one. So um, finish wise, all the same. So I am going to stop the camera so I can point it down and then, um, and then kind of show you what I'm gonna do. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I'm back. Um, I wanted to lay out some things to show you that you're going to need to complete the finish um, that we've been talking about. And I also needed to turn on the light because I don't know why it's getting kind of dark in here. So, um, so I am set to go with my white frame. And again, this is just an 8x10 frame. I also have, um, I have one un, uh, unopened stitchery tape. Um, it can be purchased at your local and online shop. I know that you can get this, you know, through other variety of sources, but, you know, reach out to a needle workshop that would, would have that. Those are great relationships to build um, as you need certain supplies. So I've got this one. Uh, this is my working one. So I end up ordering these. I usually order a lot of these at a time. <laughs> so this is double-sided acid-free tape. It comes on a roll. I'll have my, my, I call them my sticky scissors so I can cut off exactly what I need. Exacto, uh, my fabric scissors. I also have just a little awl. Read your husband's tool chest. And then on um, this little plate, I've got a little pair of embroidery scissors. Those are handy to keep around. And then little um, uh, wire brads. And these just happen to come in a um, kind of a nickel plated color, just something that I thought would go a little bit better with this particular clip. The clip is from the Tim Holtz line. Um, it does come in this size and then a much smaller size. I like the look of this size. And let's see, what else do I have here? Oh, um, I did a couple of just like fake boards, you know, pretend we're gonna, we're gonna play pretend. So pretend that, you know, this is, this particular piece is my, my stitching. Um, like, so this is, you know, that part of it, cause you wanna know how to mount that on there. And then I cut um, two boards that will go into my frame. And I already discussed how to, attach the fabric for those in a previous video. So that'll go in there and then I've got a pretty fabric on the back. Um, so I'm gonna set that one aside. This is the one, um, there's actually a little, a layer of padding. Um, that's the one that the stitching will go on. So let's, I'm gonna scoot this aside a little bit. I'm doing this in one take, so hopefully we're, we're good to go. Um, so what I do is I'll have this 
already covered and I'll sort of place it in my my frame just for um, just for placement and then I've got my cross stitch which has been um, laced and mounted on or mounted onto um, a piece of mat board I like mat board because it's got a little bit of you know heft to it but not the width and then I usually do like to put a piece of warm and natural batting under there as well um, so I'll probably want to put it right about there. Now you'll notice I've got this ribbon kind of hanging up at the top. That's because you've got two options um, for, for attaching your stitched portion onto the fabric. Now you'll notice on the back of mine, now I did not lace this, sorry, I, this is all just for purposes of the, the video because this is supposed to be cross stitch. If it was cross stitch, you would see my lacings on the back. Um, so. If, I, if it's something that I'm going to change out each month, much like, you know, the, my year of celebrations piece, where I basically did the same thing, I made a little clipboard, you can look at that video as well. I did attach, and there's a tutorial on my website about this, I did attach a little piece of ribbon here coming out from the top with double-sided tape, and then I used that to kind of hook under the clip so that I can switch out each month. And then you'll also notice that I did put a piece of wool felt back there just to cover up, you know, all the lacing, you know, and make it a little bit prettier on the back. Um, so that is why I have this on there. All I merely did was um, cut a piece of double-sided tape and I placed one right here and then peeled the backing off and then stuck a piece of ribbon to lay just inside of it and that's just on there with the double sided tape. Now if you weren't going to do it that way and you wanted it permanently fixed, for example this is permanently fixed on here, all right? Um, in fact the only ones that I have done with the ribbon sticking out the top are the interchangeable ones like this and also my French kitchen design that I showed you in um, the last video. So um, you kind of have to look at it. Is this something that's going to be stationary that you're going to want always to be this way? Um, that is a real question you should consider if you're going to finish your chalk full series this way because right now we have seven in the series and they're all going to be the same size. Do you want to get different frame each time? Now this is a very economical finish so you could certainly finish it differently each time but if you got sort of a neutral fabric for the backgrounds like say maybe a gray and white check or a gray and white print of some sort um, that would go with the color schematic of each piece because you're focusing more on the chalk aspect of it than the individual colors in here you could certainly you know have one frame one backing one clip and then just switch it out um each with each season so that that is an option for you which is why i wanted to talk about that so say for example then we're not going to do the ribbon finish we just actually want to permanently attach it so you can see i've laid in two pretty large pieces of this double-sided acid-free tape. And again, I think I showed it to you in the other video. Um, I'll lay out the piece and then I find my end here. And then I kind of do sort of a, by guess and by gosh measurement, I hold the tape up over it. I actually take my fingernail, make a little dent in the tape, and then I know where to cut. Now, sometimes when I, and in that video, I actually cut the tape in half lengthwise but if I really want to be able to adhere this you can see I use the full width I could probably if I didn't have that ribbon on there I could probably even fit a third one in there just to get nice full coverage so what I'm gonna do is first I'm gonna play with the placement just a little bit like I want it to be just about there now when I was learning okay I'm gonna tuck the ribbon back just because we're gonna pretend like it's not there when I was being taught how to custom frame, we would always either have equal lines, equal space around it for mats, or we might have a little more at the bottom than we do the sides and the top. It just kind of depend upon the formality of the piece. But I tend to think that really nowadays there are not as many rules. Um, it's really just a matter of what you like. So obviously we need to make sure that there is room enough for this clip okay so i might have to you can kind of see i scooted this down a little bit 
I want to make sure I've got equal amounts here. And yes, there's a little less showing at the bottom. However, you're going to have all this interest up here, um, kind of drawing the eye upward. So what I can do is once I know kind of where I want this, I go, yep, yep, I'm going to put this down. I'm gonna say, yes, that's where I like it. All right. I'm going to put my clip into place, make sure it can fit there. I'm going to center it. You can use a ruler to figure out, um, you know, am I equidistant on either side of the, of the clip? Um, quite frankly, a lot of times I just tend to eyeball it because remember we talked about there's always a little bit of play in um, the mat board that goes into the frame. So if I need to scoot it, just scooch it ever so a little bit left or right, I can do that. Um, anyway, so then I'm going to take, you can do a couple different things. You can take a pen because what you'll notice in the clip, uh, let's see, here and here, there are holes. Can you kind of see that? There you go. You can see that hole. So you can mark it. Okay, let's put it back. So you can mark it with a pen or a ruler in each hole, or I've done this enough now, I'm more comfortable taking my little awl and I go hold it in place and I go right through the foam core, the fabric and the foam core. And I'm gonna do it just for the one side right now, okay? I'm not gonna do the second side. So I'm gonna lift this up Kind of disassemble here, take this out, nothing's attached yet. I put the frame on just to kind of gauge, you know, where everything. So I can see the hole in my fabric. So I'm gonna take that all again, and I'm really gonna work my way through it. I even kind of came through some fabric back here, that's okay. Now this is a nice little gadget to have. You can also use um, a, a large darning needle. You can use, um, okay, I have been known to use um, a vegetable skewer from my kitchen. Um, just make sure you, you know, wash it and everything before you use it again. But anyway, so I, because I have to be able to fit the brad through here, I kind of take take this and go like that a little bit to open up the hole a little bit. Now, I will say sometimes, um, depending on the quality of the cotton fabric that you use, you can get little pulls here. Now, it's going to be covered up with the clip, but if it, it's gonna show, um, that's when I grab my little bitty embroidery scissors, make sure you have a nice sharp tip, and then I actually kind of go in there with the tips and I just do teeny little snip, 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 tiny little snips around the just the cotton fabric. That sort of helps open that up a little bit so that when you're trying to stick the brad through, it's not pulling fabric through with it and then creating any strange pulls on the front. Okay, so that's just an extra little tip. So I think I've enlarged my hole enough and you might even want to take one of your brads, your teeny little brad there, and you might want to try fitting it through. Yep, that fit through just nicely. Okay, so pull that back out. Put your, this is not easy, people. You're trying to stay on camera. You're trying to watch what you're doing, and you're... Um, your bifocals are not really helping you out here. So I'm holding that in place and I'm gonna take my wire, my little brad, go through the hole um, on the clip and then through the foam core. Now I'm gonna have to scoot that fabric out of the way on the back and actually, quite frankly, I'd probably just cut it. But now you can see the brads coming out on the back. All right, so I'm gonna open that brad up and then actually it's okay because the fabric will go back right back over it. So now I want to go to the front and you can see I'm not level there. So I'm going to level it out. And honestly, a lot of this I do really by eyeball. Okay, that looks fairly level. If you want to double check it, put it back down on your mat. Make sure you're you're sitting nicely up there with your frame. Then you're gonna go back through that next side. 
go through the foam core, through the fabric. And always make sure you've got a cutting mat underneath, please. I don't want any holes in your counters. Then again, we're going to enlarge that hole. Kind of open that hole up a little bit. Yep, you can see I barely missed fabric there. Let's take the brad, push it through the hole first to see if it'll go through. Yep, it goes through quite comfortably. So scoot the clip on down, line it up with the hole, put your clip, your brad through the clip and the back. We can even see it coming through on the back side. Open it up and you're good to go. I don't, let's just put the fabric back over it. I don't, you know, tape anything more on the back, that kind of thing, because in this case, I am going to make this, a, the cross stitch a permanent fixture here. So, I mean, you can see, I'm pushing on this, whatever, and you can even open it, and I'm putting as much pressure as I possibly can on it, and it's not going anywhere. It's not gonna come loose. So, all right. Let's go ahead and put it back in our frame once again. Now, the things you need to watch out for is that if that back little part right there, the back of the clip, you wanna make sure that you can fit it under the lip, the rabbit of the frame, okay? So, isn't that kind of just, that's just sort of sweet, custom looking little piece just like that. And now, um, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and um, put the back in because I know that's going to fit nicely in there. So I'm going to go ahead and attach this into the frame. So I'm going to put my other piece back here. I just use a fun coordinating fabric. I have, um, oh, like probably a lot of you, I have a little fat quarter problem in that, you know, I'll be in a quilt shop and they have all their pre-cut little fat quarters and I'll go, Oh, that one's pretty. What would I do with it? I don't know. I'll keep it. But then you buy a fat quarter that goes with it because, you know, you got to have some coordinates there. So I just tend to find, if it's something that's kind of been in my stash for a while, I just find something that's pretty and, uh, and do something fun on the back like I did there and I did there. I put bunnies there because that was about bunnies. Sometimes it matches, but sometimes it doesn't so it's all about just having fun and using a little bitty bit of your stash so okay so now I'm ready to um, actually go ahead and put this in this is a really great tool to have this is called a point driver you can get these at a lot of arts and or a lot of craft places or places that have uh, framing supplies and it's kind of like a um, kind of like a staple gun, but yet it shoots little points that have, uh, well, it's got a point on it and, and it drives it into the frame, hence the name point driver. Gosh, funny how they worked did it that way. But I like it because um, it just really holds everything into place. If I find I do want to switch something out or I need to pull this out for some whatever reason, I can take a screwdriver, lift the point driver up, pull my piece out, make whatever adjustments I need, and then push the point driver back in. Or if the point driver comes out, I just shoot a new one. So it's a handy little tool to have. I wanna say um, maybe they run anywhere from like 50 to 60 bucks, but if you're gonna be doing a lot of this, it's kind of worth it to have one of these. Um, it, honestly, I have to tell you a funny story. Uh, we used to do a ton of framing at the shop when I had my shop, and um, we used to use a screw. <laughs> screwdriver to drive the points in and then one day I went and got this it was like I mean the other gal that did the framing with me she's like why didn't we have one of these years ago <laughs> so it's a handy tool to have anyways I can't lay this flat because because of the um the uh, the the clip but so carefully you can see I just shot that into and that's what that looks like. So I'm gonna do one on the other side. I kind of like to work in opposite sides. And again, normally it's handy to have this laying flat on the ground, but um, with the clip, it's it's hard to lay it flat on the ground. So at that point, I only have two, dry, two points in, and it's easier to work with now. I'm not like dealing with things moving. Um, I'll go back and I'll fill more in later, but at least this lets me 
um, get my, my needlework mounted. So I'm almost ready to mount that needlework. I'm going to peel the tape back from both sides. Sometimes with this double-sided acid-free tape, if you don't have good, strong nails, and you can see I'm kind of um, really rubbing that down onto a corner, I actually use my, um, especially when you're peeling it back from fabric, I use my X-Acto blade to lift a corner up. And again, I'm doing that with my, my lack of bifocals here. I'm gonna do this on camera. I can't even believe I'm doing this. It's super easy, folks. Okay, so I got a corner lifted up. All right, and let's do my other one. Pretend, again, I, this is um, a cross-stitch piece. And there's my, so you can't see it, but this is, you can hear it, sticky. Then I'm going to place it on here, and I'm gonna put just a little bit of space between the bottom of the clip and then the top of the cross stitch. Um, I'm not gonna, oh, I knew that was gonna happen. I didn't wanna push it down. I'm making sure it's centered and I leave, I leave about an eighth of an inch. I'm gonna put it down just a little bit so you can kind of see how close, because I'm gonna put a bow up there on a lot of mine, I do. So I'm gonna push that down just a little bit more so then, like for example, I made a bow here, and then I did the Just Another Button Company pin mini that they made to coordinate with this piece. That actually is going through the top of the bow, and then through, um, just probably maybe catches the top side of the, of the stitching, and then goes straight into the mat board. And by having two layers of, no, excuse me, foam core, by having the thickness of two layers of the foam core, the pins don't come out the back. They just get kind of buried in there and they're pretty sturdy in there. And that actually kind of helps hold this into place too. Now on this one, you can see I did not put any edging on it. I just really liked that clean, crisp edge just like that. Um, that's now where you have to make a choice. What do you want to do? Of course, you know, put your bow up here, put your pins through. I like attaching things like bows with just pins because later if I find a better ribbon or my ribbon gets a little shop worn kind of thing because my stuff does travel, I can put in, I can pull the pins out, put a new rib, ribbon on and put the pins back in and it looks brand new. Um, on this particular piece, at this point, once it was on, I actually added um, a little uh, twisted cord out of DMC, out of a coordinated DMC. Um, on my, um, on most of my farmhouse chalk pieces, I do use, this actually a little burlap ribbon. I don't know if you can kind of see it on the edge there. I don't even glue that on. It's just a little thin burlap tape. Um, I actually pin it in. There's a pin in the corner and a pin halfway, and that's actually what's holding the burlap all the way around. I just thought it was kind of, it just sort of added just, just a little unseen layer, I guess, is what I'm thinking about. But, um, but anyway, so that's pretty much it. You're just gonna use the wire, or the, the little brads to go through your foam core. And, um, and I really did the same kind of finish here too with the uh, going through the, the clipboard. Um, do check out the, I think I've done a couple different tutorials on how to make um, that clipboard. Uh, both on floss tube and my and my website so um, so hopefully now that helps the biggest secret really is the stitchery tape and um, and then just kind of going through the steps to make sure everything's centered and put on now I am going to stop and bring the camera back up for one last little word about a few of the stitch counts and things like that okay so I'm back and I'm up and ooh, I'm I well, whatever, it's fine. <laughs> um, anyway, so a couple words I wanna say about stitch counts and what count fabric and things like that. I'm getting a lot of questions. I do answer, if I get the email, I do answer it. Um, sometimes it might take me a couple days. Um, if I feel the panic in your email, I try to get back to you a lot sooner because um, sometimes you know you're in the middle of that stitch and you're not sure, so I'll quickly email her. Um, I try to get back as quickly as possible. Um, with with my charts, um, I give the directions as if when I'll say like two over two on 32 count, um, 
that's the direction as if I'm you're using the model what the fabric that I used for the model um, and that goes with pretty much you know anything that I do now do you have to stitch on what I stitched on no you do not you can do it on 28 count you can do it on 46 count you can do it on 14 count 22 count you can do all different things however you do have to make some adjustments for are you stitching over one are you stitching over two are you stitching with how many threads that kind of thing um, so I still do get the question you know if I'm doing 14 count what do I do how do I adjust it how big a fabric that kind of thing um, so I, and and a a lot of it is you know a lot of you are coming back to stitching or your new stitchers and yay I love it it's awesome I just I love what's happening in the stitching community right now I've said it before I'll say it again it's just it's so it's so exciting to see um, so that being said um, if you were to stitch this on a 14 count because from what I understand some shops are doing this as a club and it's going out with maybe a fabric that is different than what is named on the actual chart um, they that's their decision to to chart it or to kit it excuse me how they want to but now my directions are as if you were using the 32 count slate fabrics by Stephanie by all means, use what you want to, whether it's 14 count, 16 count, 32, 28. Um, but so if you're going to do a 14 or a 16, you're going to want to do two threads, but over one square, not over two threads like this. And so really truthfully, if you're going to do a 16 count, it's going to be the exact same size as this. Um, or if you're going to do a 14 count, it's going to be a little bit bigger, probably about a half inch bigger. If you stitch over one block um, so that and then this one so this one I've had a lot of questions about so kind of want to clarify that um, and I think I did actually say in the next one that's coming out two threads over two on 32 count two threads over one on say 14 or 16 count and if I didn't say that I'm sorry I'll put that in the next one um, that's just that's something that I'm learning to do along the way just because we are welcoming so many stitchers new stitchers and I want to make sure that the charts are easy to follow and um, so sometimes you know um, I'm hoping that shops pass that message along as well um, but I certainly am going to do my part because I want you to keep stitching it's so exciting um, same thing this piece also I got a, I've gotten a lot of questions about this one how big do I um, cut my my piece because they want to do 14 count as opposed to this was 28 count um, same size it's in the pattern same size because 28 count over 2 equals 14 um, and so so I again I've, I answer emails but I did kind of want to put that out there and this one's um, a fun stitch uh, I've had people say well how do I change colors da, 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 da. this one's super easy and I did it that way on purpose um, Three, there's three colors so pick a fabric and it does give the on the chart the chart is very easy to follow it's got great instructions Karen this was one um, Karen uh, Torres from so much to love bags um, did the instructions for this one she took all the photos and wrote the super easy instructions the photos are in black and white but she did high contrast in um, colors so very easy to follow it's not difficult at all um, and so what you can do and it's got the yardage requirements for the fabric so if you've got fabric at home that you remember how I said you know I have a problem collecting fabrics sometimes so maybe you don't have this fabric but you have another fabric that you love um, pick three shades from it and that's what you do here um, just you know pick which color you want to be the dominant and do say all your words and that and just kind of pick out your shades as you go but again the bag is very easy to follow the instructions are very easy to follow um, it's got the um, a nice little pocket on the inside and she, of course you know she knew I was a gingham gal so um, anyway so hopefully that helps you a little bit um, I don't know like I said but keep emailing me if you've got questions about um, you know changing the fabrics that kind of thing um, the fun thing about I will say about the chalk pieces is you're always gonna kind of get two different looks at what this looks like I do stitch mine on the chalk designs that I do where I collaborate with um, Priscilla where I base it on her she does the artwork and I do the cross stitch um, 
I am always gonna stitch on 32 count and I'm gonna use some kind of a dark gray fabric. I, I do tend to use a lot of the Slate from Fabrics by Stephanie. Um, she, I believe, uses 28 count black Monaco, I think is what she uses. I'm sorry, don't quote me on that, but she does, I know she does 28 count black. Um, and so the colors, like when we're, uh, she and I actually work through a lot of the colors together. Um, so we're always very careful about, you know, will the colors pop off the black? Because sometimes they pop off the black differently than they do the dark gray. Um, so we try to get colors that are going to work for all of that. So if you're going to use, you know, just, it kind of, it, it, know that we've, you know, we, we try to get you colors that are going to work. And, and also, um, the, the really, if, if it means stitching on 14 count to make the, you know, stitching on the dark fabric easier, um, great lights, great, you know, day, daylight, you know, all those, I constantly see people ask there also, you know, how do I stitch on dark? You know, those are all the great things to, you know, listen or to try. And, um, but it, for me personally, it's a lot of good natural light. It's a lot of daytime stitching, not nighttime stitching, except, you know, sometimes I have to stitch on it at night cause I've got deadlines. Um, but, um, Anyway, um, the other thing I'm going to try, uh, Brenda Gervais happened to mention on a post this week about some ballpoint needles, and I asked her if she thought they would be good for stitching on the dark linen, and she thought they might, so I'm going to try and locate some and give them a try, and then, hey, maybe that's just something else to help um, uh, on the, with the dark linens. But I have gone on way longer than I intended to, so um, hopefully this has helped you. Oh, and I guess, by the way, go ahead and put more of the, I usually do two per side on something this side, uh, drive a couple more points in to secure your piece, and ta-da, you're done! So, um, I'm gonna, I could keep going. <laughs> anyway, enjoy the stitch, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.